In this analysis video, I'm going to answer a member question about shallowing versus being shallow. So he asked if you if you shallow your arms, you know, where will the club point? And I wanted to do this video to point out that the key to arm shallowing is that it's a movement, it's not really a position. So I've got two golfers here um, that I hope will help illustrate this point. Um, over on the right, I've got Fred Couples. Over on the left, I've got Phil Mickelson. You can see they're, they're slightly different camera angles, but you can see that, you know, compared to some body landmarks, both of these club shafts would be considered more steep. You know, they're pointing slightly inside the golf ball. Um, Phil's maybe a little bit more so. Um, so they're both kind of steep in this position. Now, I know from their 3Ds that Fred Couples is shallowed um, actually a little bit more than average, so he's shallowed a good bit to get this point, and Phil Mickelson hasn't had very much arm shallowing, if any at all. He actually does more of his arm shallowing later. So if I back it up to the top of the swing, we'll see how they get into that, uh, the, that delivery position, or that kind of downswing checkpoint. So from here, at the top of the swing, you can see they're both in a slightly across-the-line position, uh, across the line is steep. If you were to uh, look at across the line, it basically means the club shaft is bisecting the arms. Uh, so it would be closer to the left arm than to the right arm, which is how it looks when we, um, when we look at steep and shallow later in the downswing. Now, as Fred Couples starts it changing direction, you can, you can see some forearm rotation if you really know what to look for. If you're looking at the relationship of the back of the left hand compared to the point of the elbow, you'll be able to see that there's some left arm rotation through that phase there where the club is just kind of dropping or shallowing. Now it's easier to see the effects of it here because he's kind of given the club some shallowing momentum as he's still rotating and you'll see that the club through there has a the effect of a little bit more of a shallow position and he's done so while his body's continued to power the swing that allows him to hit it more with his body than with his arms and you'll see that he has some good arm bend still at impact all that is really useful for when hitting the longer clubs like the driver now phil from a similar ish uh you know club arm position at the top of the swing, you can see that the back of the left hand compared to the elbow doesn't really rotate through there. It's pretty much going in the same direction. So the club is swinging in roughly the same direction that the hands are going instead of swinging more down and back. And so he doesn't really get any shallowing there, so he has to shallow more by straightening that right arm and kind of stalling some of his rotation. Now that combination can be great for wedges and short irons, but it's usually problematic with a club that has a little bit higher uh, moment of inertia and um, less loft. So having limited flat spot, limited body power tends to produce some, some more problematic patterns for the longer club like the driver. So even though they have a club both in a steeper position in transition, Fred Couples is able to hit about 70% of the fairways, and Phil Mickelson will be below 60, um, oftentimes in the 50s, or some tournaments even lower than that. So they both hit the ball a long way, but Fred Couples is significantly more accurate from a similar position because he's doing a different movement to get into that position, not just the absolute position. So as you watch videos, I think it's important to kind of uh, challenge yourself and train yourself to be able to see the movements that get them into positions, not just the isolated positions. That's why on the website we teach the movement combinations that work during each phase of the swing so that you can pick and choose and kind of match up your swing to hopefully uh, move your swing in a good direction and continue to have a long-term plan and uh, continued positive results. If you're watching this on YouTube and you want to learn more about the movements like how to shallow your arms in transition, then head over to golfsmartacademy.com, sign up for a free membership, and there you'll be able to watch all the videos in the transition section 
uh, related to the arm shadowing. In fact, I'll include a playlist to help you find those transition videos. If you click in the descri description, uh, it'll take you over. You can sign up for a free membership and watch all those videos. If you're not quite ready to sign up for a free membership, then please like or share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way, whenever we create new content, you'll be the first to know about it.